couple of days ago, I released a video on the Visual CSS Grid Builder in Bricks 2.0. We went through the fundamentals, how to use it, and just kind of how to get started. And that's a great primer. But in this video, we're going to take it a couple of steps further. I'm going to show you a more comprehensive, complex example, and also show you how you can use this with dynamic data, and also how we can use this with the loop builder or the loop functionality. Let me show you the example, and then we're going to go through and actually build this for ourselves. It's a lot easier than you may think. So this layout is basically a post loop. We're pulling in the title, the featured image, and a basic excerpt, but we want to make a more creative design. So we've got a full width, double height section. We've then got this sort of mix of different sizes and shapes to give us a much more interesting layout. I've actually used a similar example on the Learn Bricks Builder homepage. Let me show you. You can see we've got these various different sections, and as you can see, it's a more interesting layout than just having simple two or three columns, two or three rows. We're kind of making things 50, 50, 30, 70. You know, you get the idea. It just makes it kind of breaks up that space and that boring aspect of a typical grid layout. So now we've seen what we're going to create. Let's go and create it in Bricks. Now, most important thing here is this is a Bricks 2.0 feature. If you're on Bricks version 1.x, you're not going to have the same function. Once we have our blank page or template set up, first thing we're going to do is just go in and add in a section with a container inside it. This is going to contain our card design. So speaking of our card, let's go and create it. Select our container, come back over, we're going to insert a block. This block is then going to have three different elements, but obviously you can make this up in whatever kind of format that you want. So inside here, we're going to go and add in three elements. We're going to add in a heading, we're going to add in an image, and we're going to add in some basic text. Simple as that. Let's rename the block to card. Let's apply a little bit of basic styling to this. So let's select our card, come over to the content section on the left-hand side. And from there, we're going to come into our row gap. Now I'm using core framework, but you can use arbitrary values, your own custom variables, or any CSS framework you want to use. I'm just going to simply use core framework. And we're going to put in something like 2xs to have a little bit of space in between each one. Now we want to make sure that everything is set up semantically correct. So to do this, we're going to select our container, going to come to the HTML tag and set this to be an unordered list. And then we're going to select our card and we're going to set our card to be a list item. Once you do that, things kind of shift over a little bit. You may not see it, but if you take a look at the edge now of this block, you can see we've got this gap. Now, this is basically because we put a list item inside you and an ordered list and so on, it automatically puts a 40 pixel margin or padding around the left hand side. So to get rid of that, we come over to the style section, come into our layout, and we're going to make sure we select our container. And you can see there's 40, we're going to zero that out. Now, obviously, you could do this inside your theme style, you could do it inside CSS, so it's globally applied. I'm just showing you how to do it in the simplest format. Okay, so we've now got the basics in place. Next thing we want to do is create our loop. So to do that, we're going to select our card. We're going to come over to our content, and from there, we're going to enable the query loop, open the query loop option up, and posts is perfectly fine. In this example, we're going to set this to be five posts because that's how we want things to be laid out, but obviously set to whatever works for the kind of grid layout that you want to create. Okay, so you'll see now we have five items, but it's all just basically pulling in placeholder text. Let's select our heading, come over and remove this filler text, choose our dynamic data and set this to be the post title. H3 in this example is good, and again, from a semantic point of view, H3 is generally a good starting point. Let's come into our styles, and let's just come into our typography, and just make this a little smaller. Again, I'm going to use my core framework, and I'm going to set my text to be large. Again, I would generally set up a class for this, so we can set up our classes and use BEM naming and so on. I don't want to get too deep into the weeds. I just want to show you how you can do this sort of design side of things. Okay, so there's the title. Let's select our image, come back to our content, choose dynamic data, scroll till we find our featured image. In this example, we want to use the full size image. I'm going to come into our basic text, and from there, we're going to clear out this filler, drop in the dynamic, and we're going to just choose the option for the excerpt. And in this example, we'll just set it to something like 20 words. Now, you'll notice that we've got this kind of annoying flashing going on. This is something that's carried over from Bricks 1.x. And for some reason, when you work with a loop, this can kind of happen. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly just save this and refresh my page. And that clears out the problem, thankfully. So we are getting somewhere. You can see we now have basic setup. 
Okay, so now we want to set this up to be using a CSS grid. To do that, we're gonna select our container. With our container selected, we're gonna come over into our content and change this from flex to grid and nothing changes. And that's because we haven't actually configured how the grid is going to work. So first things first, let's put a gap inside here. So we'll select the options. We're gonna put a medium gap in. Now let's go in and open up the visual grid builder. So let's choose the option from here. And this is now going to show us basically what we've seen on screen. We've got one column, five rows, boring. So let's start off with a simple example. Let's say we want to put this into two columns. There we go, that looks a little bit better. And the five items, we've got this sort of orphan at the end with nothing inside there. Well, we'll address that by effectively just stretching this out over two columns, and now we have a bigger top section. So if we just come back out of this, you'll see now we basically have a sort of hero post at the top, and underneath we have these individual posts in a nice grid layout. Now, if you're getting value from this video, why not give it a thumbs up to tell YouTube that you enjoy this type of content? And while you're down there, why not hit the subscribe button as well? But if you're not enjoying it, you can hit the thumbs down button twice, as that seems to work pretty well too. Anyway, let's get back on with this tutorial. So that already looks a little better, but it's not the most exciting. So let's go back into our grid and let's just mix things up a little bit. So once we're inside here, you can see as I covered in the first video, we've got the four different responsive options, our desktop, which is kind of right at the top of the stack. And then if we go to tablet portrait, you go to mobile landscape, mobile portrait, they're all exactly the same. However, we can easily change those. So for example, if we come into the tablet portrait, and we'll say in this example, we want to have five rows, and we're going to say we want to have just a single column. Now you'll notice when I try to do that, it snaps back. That's because we've got this one spacing over two columns. Therefore, we need to just reset that back. Once we've done that, you can see that now snaps into one column and five rows. And if we go back to our desktop, you see that switches back to the design that we created originally. And if we go to our mobile landscape, the cascade here is not using the desktop because we changed the one below that. So the tablet portrait now takes precedence. And unless we change the mobile landscape and mobile portrait, they will be exactly the same. So we can get creative here and have different design layers based upon the type of device that someone's using. So we can have a really complicated layer on desktop where there's a lot more real estate, and we could have simpler ones as we sort of cascade down the various different responsive sizes. So for our example, let's leave those other three as they are. I've shown you how you can operate it, how you can change it. It's just repeating the same thing. Let's focus on our desktop a little bit more. So what we can do now is we can adjust things inside you. So let's go in and say we want to put in a couple more rows. So we'll say five rows. Now we can have a bit of fun with our design. You could come in and change the FR value or the fraction value. In other words, this is one FR, so it takes up 50%, and this side was one FR, so it takes up 50% as well. If you wanted to change that, you absolutely could do. So you could come in and say, we're gonna set that to two FR, and now you'll see the first column takes up sort of two fractions or two thirds, and the right hand takes up a single third. And you'll see that this one still expands over the two. So now if we come back out of this, so now we have a much more interesting design, but you'll notice we have a problem. You'll see that our images and the content all look a little bit odd. The reason being is because we haven't actually told the images how we want them to work. So let's address that next. Let's come over to our image. Now we're just selecting the one image because this is kind of a loop, so it's just repeating through everything. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna come over to the left-hand side for our content. You can set an aspect ratio here if you want to. Let's say, for example, we use 16 by nine. Change the object fit to be cover. And you'll notice that doesn't really correct anything. So how do we go about correcting it? Let me just show you. With the image still selected, we're gonna jump into the style section, open up our layout tab, and we're gonna to come to height, and we're gonna set this to be 100%. And now you can see our images take up the full space, or the content takes up the full space. So now we have a little bit more control over everything, making sure that things will scale proportionally and still look good. So let's go back to our container and go back into our grid, and let's just mix things up a little bit more. We've got this empty space at the bottom, which looks a little bit sucky. So what we're gonna do is, we're going to put these back to be one FR. There we go. And let's have a bit of fun with these. Let's say, for example, we want 
move that one down to there. We'll grab this one and we'll expand that out. And we'll do the same on this one. But we'll expand that over two, push that down, expand this one over two as well. And we now have a much more complex layout. So again, if we jump out of this and go and take a look, we now have a much more comprehensive complex layout and the images and everything are scaling to sit inside the space that we've given them. So there's more flexibility here on how you can create these more intricate designs. So hopefully what you can see is that by using this alongside the loop, alongside a little bit of just basic styling and so on, you can create much more interesting layouts. The final thing I want to quickly do is make sure that from a semantic point of view, that not only is our card set up correctly, but also the entire card is clickable. In other words, at the moment, let's just set the heading as a link. And we'll just say this is going to be dynamic data and it's going to link through to the post link. So now the link is only available on the title. So we could go through and set the image to be a link and the basic text to be a link, or we could set the card to be a link. It just doesn't work the way that you expect it to. It's not the best way of doing it. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a little bit of code, which I'll link to in the details down below, and that will expand the link out from our heading and it'll make the entire card clickable, but still only have one link. So from a screen reader point of view and from a semantic point of view, everything ties together nicely. So all we need to do is select our card. And the key thing here is making sure that our heading is a H3 and is set up to be a link. So we we'll select our card, we're going to come back over into our style and open up the CSS tab. And inside here, we're going to drop in a little bit of code. Now, don't worry, you don't need to understand too much about this. You just need to know what to change if you don't follow exactly what I do in this particular video. So let's expand this out a little bit so we can see a bit more. And I'm just going to grab the little bit of code and paste it in. So let's expand this out. And let me show you what's happening. There's a little note at the top that tells you exactly what you need to do. So ensure that the parent element of the card design, in other words, what we've got selected, and then you have at least one link applied, and generally this is to the heading. So if we take a look, you can see we're setting this to be position relative, and this is an important point that has to be set to position relative. We then have the H3, so if you use a H2 or you use a button or something else to be your link, you simply need to make sure you change that H3 to the HTML tag that is specific to what you've set to be the link. Hope that makes sense. Then everything else can basically be left as it is. The only thing you need to change is that H3 if you don't have the H3 as a link. So now if we save this and we'll go and preview it, you can see there's our much more comprehensive design. And if we come over, uh, well, any of our cards, cover the image, it's a clickable link, come over the text, it's clickable, come over the text underneath, it's clickable. So the entire card is a clickable element. So we set things up in a much more logical fashion, semantically correct. You've got all the things we need inside you to make this a really cool looking, interesting layout done visually and making sure that the underlying code and structure is all set up correctly as well. Now, hopefully you found this useful. If you'd like to learn more about working with Bricks 2.0 and Bricks in general, you can check out this playlist next. All applicable links are in the description down below. My name is Paul C. This is WP Tuts. And until next time, take care.